First of all, from one side, hard surface modeling tools can also be used for organic modeling. And then 3D sculpting, something that is specifically used for organic stuff, for the most part. But it can also be used to create hard surfaces, which adds to the confusion. Generally speaking, hard surface modeling uses manual 3D modeling techniques to create objects that generally have sharp edges, like flat surfaces and clean shapes, which is typically the design language that you would find in a man-made or mechanical object, or maybe sci-fi stuff for example. Unlike organic modeling, which focuses on softer, natural forms like characters, creatures, or plants. Also, hard surface modeling is typically preferred for this task because it is the easiest way to achieve sharp, crispy edges and offers a level of control that can't be found in any other method. But there is one little issue here. Despite having the same origin, hard surface evolved into both polygonal and CAD modeling. But which one is actually better? Before we continue, I wanted to let you know guys that the Blender Market is having right now a huge summer sale with 25% discount on thousands of Blender products from add-ons, courses, shaders, you name it. Also, if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of the best add-ons and courses that can take your projects to the next level. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's start with polygonal modeling, an approach in 3D modeling where you build shapes using flat surfaces, which are known as polygons. Basically, you layer and connect a bunch of flat panels that are usually triangles or rectangles to create 3D shapes and 3D structures, which all together make up what is called a 3D model's topology. The core concept that video game engines and 3D software like Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, Max, and so on typically use to read and display 3D graphics. I'll get into the reason for that shortly. But first, in polygonal modeling, a topology consists of a series of vertices, edges, and faces, which you can manipulate however you want. Well, almost. 3D software in general typically come with a set of primitive shapes, such as cubes, spheres, and circles, that you can use as a base, as well as an arsenal of the usual modeling tools, like extrusion, inset, and beveling along with more advanced techniques such as modifiers and buoys, which gives you the ability to pick between two objects to either merge them, cut a hole, or turn them into two sections. What's important to note in polygonal modeling is that unless you use add-ons, it is gonna be limited to a certain extent. And even with add-ons, you still have to do a lot of work, but it is way better. For example, if vertices are closer to each other, it might give you shading issues. But well, let's imagine a case or you have a bevel where you have to bevel an edge that is between two other edges to add a smooth curvature. Sadly, you cannot extend the size of that curvature beyond those edges or things will start looking pretty messy. Besides, if you have a model with a large number of polygons, your 3D model will probably look like a nightmare if you add booleans or bevels, not to mention all the modeling tricks and details you have to apply. For CAD modeling, on the other hand, the story is way different because it stands for computer-aided design modeling, meaning it is typically used to create 2D or 3D models which are intended to be recreated as physical objects in the real world. Additionally, CAD software are excellent for visualizing and analyzing designs before they are built, at least industry standard ones such as Rhino and Fusion 360. Now, you might be thinking, wait, this comparison doesn't make sense. One for art and the other is for engineering. Granted, if you are an artist, the engineering side might not seem that exciting, but many cut software are still used in art as well, to the point where they even made art-focused CAD software such as Plasticity and Moi 3D due to how powerful CAD can be for artistic projects. Now, CAD has tons of modeling methods, and it is unrealistic to cover all of them in just one video. Otherwise, I would be here till tomorrow. Instead, we're gonna talk about pair solids and nerves modeling, two techniques that Plasticity uses, which is, in the eyes of many, the best CAD software for artists. So, actually, pair solid is a software library that uses complex mathematical functions to perform traditional modeling operations, such as booleans and inserts. 
just like polygonal modeling in a sense. However, the difference is that there is no polygons to worry about. You see, the amount of details in polygonal models are limited by how many polygons they have. However, in CAD, the details are added with math. Numbers are in theory infinite, so you can just keep adding as long as your hardware can handle them. The second type is NURBS, and as a quick definition, it is drawing or selecting flat 2D shapes and curves, and automatically combining them to form a 3D model by using techniques such as lofting or sweeping, which can be then further redefined by using various control points. The particularity of this workflow is how easy it is to create smooth surfaces, with the ability to mix effortlessly between various sharp shapes to create sleek looks and beautiful smooth transition between them, without having to deal with any headache from topology. When I learned about CAD for the first time, I used to think it was some sort of miraculous solution that can save me from all the troubles, but well, if polygons still exist, it is for a good reason. You see, while CAD offers total freedom, I mean, you can add details however you want and you don't have polygon limitation. However, polygons are still what is used in fields such as animation, video games, and almost any video production, because they are easier to render and simpler to animate. This means that for a CAD model to work under this context, it has to be converted into polygon-based models, and many CAD software offer that. Now, for the part that you've been waiting for, which one is actually better? I wish I can give you a definite yes or no, but I'm not sure either, because it depends on what you do. Look, it is just one of those topics where it really depends on who you ask and what they are using it for. If it is for engineering, manufacturing, product design and such, the answer is CAD all day long. But if you are in the realm of art and creating 3D content for mediums like video games, movies and such, the question is much more complicated than it seems. Polygonal modeling is a standard in most tools and engines, I mean 3D tools and 3D engines. And anyone who's interested in this should learn about the proper topology techniques that come with it. So it makes it possible to create optimized game assets, good materials and normals, and proper shading. Because the fewer polygons there are on the screen, the easier it is to render, and won't require as many hardware resources. Personally, the way I like to do it is by looking at the asset I'm about to create, and checking if it has a ton of smooth transitions between sharp surfaces. If it does, then CAT is much better with techniques such as lofting instead of using polygonal modeling techniques such as subdivision. If it doesn't have a lot of smooth surfaces, I would stick with polygonal modeling because it can give you full control over topology, rather than having to clean it and optimize it afterward and convert it from CAD, which can take a longer amount of time, instead of just using polygons and keeping track of the polygons from the start. In the end, this is just my view on the matter, and this topic is much more complex than this, and there's no definitive answer because it is just a question of preferences and what you are most comfortable with. So if you have a different view, I would love to hear about it in the comment section down below. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.